Hello, Brian McCarthy here from Bolt and Break. It's been a while, but uh, I'm excited to be back with a new tutorial. This one was actually a requested one last year, but I've got around to making it. It is making the texture that you saw in the preview image for the volume measure. Um, the way we make this texture is a little bit unorthodox. Uh, we start making the diffuse map in After Effects, but stick with me, it's a cool one, and you get to make something very cool in After Effects as well. Um, we bring it then into Cinema 4D and we render it using Redshift. Let's jump into After Effects now and have a look. Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to start making this texture in After Effects. May sound a bit strange uh, making a diffuse map in After Effects, but just because it's an abstract style texture, I find After Effects really quick and easy to kind of spit out some interesting and abstract results. We're going to look at how I made this diffuse map in After Effects. Let's get started. So we're going to be aiming for a result like this and create a new comp and call this texture. Um, and just to note on this, it's a 2K texture, so 2048 by 2048. And in our texture composition, we want to create another composition and call this base color. And go back into your texture composition and drag your base color into this. Create a new solid in your base color composition, call this base color one and we want to put in a four color gradient and I am going to just paste the colors I've used in my gradient I will put the hex values in the description below okay cool so the next effect we want to add is griddler this will proceed to chop up our color graded into kind of squares and we want to put it at an angle and we want to bring our tile size up to about 20 cool and then we want to put it on directional blur so so the colors start to blend into each other and put that at an angle maybe about 135 bring our blur length up to about 220 maybe bring it down to 200 the next effect we want to use is a distortion effect, you know, kind of bring this all together. Uh, polar coordinates, leave our type of conversion just set to polar react um, and bring our interpolation up to about 95. Now let's duplicate our base color one, this base color two. And if we go back into our polar coordinates, let's set the type conversion to react to polar, bring it down to about 20%. And just move that down, juxtaposition a little bit. Maybe take off our directional blur and leave it on for now. We can just play with the values again. The next thing we want to do is add a adjustment layer, control alt Y, add radial blur to the adjustment layer and bring that up to about 10. And you can start to see it all kind of blurs into each other, maybe we're down to five. In our base layer color, in our base color two layer, which is below our base color one layer, bring it up to about 110. Uh, maybe bring down the directional blur. And in our texture composition, we want to add turbulent displace on top of our base color layer. And change our displacement type to cross displacement. And set the size up a little bit. Maybe bring up our complexity ever so slightly. And add some cross blur maybe to it. Just a little bit. And repeat the edge pixels so we're not getting any darker edges on that. Let's 
So this is ready to go. And in After Effects, if you want to render a still, just go to Save Frame As File, or you can go Control Alt S, and that will bring you straight to your render queue. Let's delete this one. And you can choose your image type here, PNG, Photoshop, or TIFF. PNG should be fine for that. And just name it appropriately. And then just click render. We're gonna jump now into Cinema 4D and tweak the texture appropriately to get that look we want in the preview. So here we are in Cinema 4D and this is our model using the Vanya Mesher. No material has been applied. Uh, just a note, I am using a HDR map um, and that will change the look of the scene. But to get the multicolored kind of fluorescent look, we're going to begin and we're going to create a redshift material. And this is our node editor and we want to apply a texture to our color. So let's just plug that in there. And, and here's our texture that we rendered out from After Effects. Cool. So let's apply it to the Vanya Mesher and click render. Okay, cool. Now it's not looking exactly how we might want it to look. There's not as much color in here, but we can fix that with a few tweaks. The first thing that we're going to do is add a color correction. And we're going to put that into our input. Uh, we're going to just go out here. I'm just going to put this out nicely. Okay, cool. And let's maybe bring this down to 0.9 and ramp maybe our contrast up just a little bit so we get more definition between each color. Go 0.7. Okay. Now I feel like we don't have a lot of control here with um, just this setup. So I'm going to add a UV projection node. And for the UV projection, I'm going to plug in the texture into color and put that back into the input of color correction. Okay, cool. Now there's a, ch a change here of how the texture is looking. Uh, maybe let's bring down our contrast to 0.6. What's really cool about this node is we can change projection of the texture onto this mesh. Uh, let's go spherical for now and bring this angle down to maybe 60. And you can already see we're starting to get that look that we want. We can even go cylindrical. And that's quite cool because we're getting that yellow, nice yellow streak through here and it's blending. Obviously, this is not seamless um, here, but we're just setting this up for the shot only. I mean, if you want to play around and make it seamless, you can, um, but that would be for a bigger object and if we were to zoom out with the camera. But we're just kind of looking for something that's working within this scene. Let's try spherical. And bring the angle back up. And you get to really control where the color is here, which is quite nice. We can even rotate it here and transform. Get some nice streaks going through the end. And it's more or less just playing around with it because this is quite an abstract looking aesthetic. So, you know, your process can be just as abstract. It doesn't have to be very linear. We're not looking, we're looking for, to create something a bit, a little bit surreal and artistic here. Okay. Now this is all great, but it's super shiny and it's, you know, we want more control over how the light bounces in between these sectors. Cause it's just looks a bit, it looks a bit cheap right now with the material. So to do that, we want to uh, change our present maybe to plastic and we can already see a change in the shimmer of this we, to get more kind of bounce and refraction of the light it would be really cool if we could just add some translucency to this let's maybe put this to 2.5 
2.45. Let's try that. 0.3. Play with our backlight a little bit. It's cool. Now we're getting that kind of faded look that we originally had in the preview. If we were to change it to full white, it would be much more translucent as we can see here. But this is again, because it's kind of an abstract idea, you know, adding a kind of a tinge of pink or blue, it kind of, it's like a blue window or a, you know, a translucent glass that has a tint to it. And that adds even more flair, let's say to it. Let's maybe add more saturation to our blue here. Cool, I quite like this and this is working well. Maybe bring down the translucency to 0.25. Okay, so we really want to control the fall off of the light and kind of the specular areas of this material because it just looks really, really glossy and shiny at the moment. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is change our BRDF to Beckman and that allows for a smaller fall off on the specular highlights. Now we're going to bring our roughness up to 0.3 just to kind of roughen out those shiny areas. And then the next thing we're going to do is bring our sheen down just to a black and just bring that roughness down to zero. We just don't need to add much in terms of a sheen. And then the next thing we want to do here is just kind of add a tiny bit of weight to our refraction and bring that up to 0.1 and maybe just put our dispersion up to 70. And let's see what we get here because that will maybe provide some interesting results in terms of how the light is hitting off the materials. And the next thing we'll do is just change our subsurface to 0 0.1. Maybe take just 0 0.01. And then next we want to go to our coating and just add one to the weight of our coating. And this adds a really nice extra shine to everything that we've just built on top of this. And yeah, it's looking quite shiny, but in a kind of in a much more tangible way. It feels like you could actually see this material in the real world. And even if you're making something surreal, it needs to feel apart. It just needs to feel more believable, if that makes sense. It might be worth adding just a tad bit of saturation to our translucency here and just maybe some more roughness. OK, this is looking very cool and, you know, it's a, a pretty simple setup in terms of how materials work so i think even if you're a beginner to redshift uh this is pretty understandable um obviously you have to have a base understanding of how materials work um thanks for watching this one uh definitely going to be doing more redshift tutorials in the future um i will be looking into octane as well um let me know if you have any questions or requests in the comments below remember to like and subscribe of course Thank you for watching and goodbye.